I'm here today with Serena Zhu, the head of marketing for Freewire Tech, a really cool company out of based out of California. Is is that correct? Is that where your headquarters? Correct. Okay. Freewire Technologies. We're headquartered out of uh, San Fr uh, San Leandro, California. Okay. Uh, why would someone, you know, s as a uh, electric vehicle, maybe driver or potential customer, why would they use Freewire Tech? What's the, what, what do you do specifically? Sure. So Freewire Technologies, we make mobile chargers, mobile electric vehicle chargers okay. uh, called Mobi chargers. And the reason why this is different than your typical charging station is, is that it's not confined into a charging spot. So there are a whole host of reasons why this is much more convenient for the uh, facility manager or network operator to install these kinds of chargers instead. Um, essentially, you're not looking at great infrastructure, uh, complex infrastructure upgrades to be able to facilitate EV charging, which you would have to for a lot of the other traditional fixed charging solutions. Um, furthermore, if you're a large charging infrastructure operator and you want to be able to optimize your locations before um, putting down a large capital investment on charging infrastructure and to later realize that this is actually a pretty bad location, the drivers are not coming through here to recharge, mm -hmm. Then, but you've already made that investment. This allows you to test the locations before you kind of um, make that decision. Okay, so it's like the plug's kind of driving to to the to the user, is that right? Instead of like someone pulling up to a plug and, and using it, uh, you know, traditional charging station, is that? That's that's that right? a potential that's a potential uh, benefit as well, and that's a little more for the drivers. So if they're mm -hmm. stuck on the road somewhere. Um, before with internal combustion cars, you would have a, a AAA come up with a diesel generator or something, uh, mm -hmm. or no, like a can of fuel or something. But in in this case, they would come with one of our um, battery chargers and just bring, basically bringing the plug to the car. But in terms of a little more of a fixed, of, of a permanent um, charging station at a location at a supermarket, Market or something. This would allow the super supermarket owners to have a charging station without going through the uh, all the complexity that is associated with installing fixed charging. You know, and that's typically like you could be upgrading your transformers. You could be running like a hundred feet of a wiring conduit or something to be able to put in, especially a fast charger at a supermarket. Uh -huh. And this is a, a good way around it. Okay, that makes sense, especially for, so it's kind of like for an individual to be used or even all the way up to a whole fleet of electric vehicles, right, that kind right. of the whole range, yeah, okay, Right. that makes sense. So somebody like me, you know, if I'm driving my Leaf or whatever, um, you know, would I be able to call FreeWire and then have it come to me or is it not that personal? Well, we are... We were sort of the technology provider, and uh, okay. we would be pairing with other um, service companies, uh, maybe potentially someone like a, a triple A, or maybe it's another startup or something that wants to provide uh, emergency EV charging services. However, we would always just provide the technology, the product that enables this. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Okay, so I guess <laughs> I had this this question here about. You know, would an app ever exist for FreeWire? And uh, I don't know if that really would. <laughs> Actually, would so we we do have an app. We do have an app um, for oh, really? one of these more virtual services that okay. uh, we have been able to launch. And the app works in this manner. This is for a very specific customer type, uh, mostly corporations in in the Silicon Valley Bay, uh, in the Silicon Valley area that want to offer. Uh, EV charging to their employees and they the issues that they have had with traditional chargers are that they see the, their workforce the EV driving workforce 
spend a good amount of their day rotating their cars and you know doing this like hot potato dance or something with yeah. the charging spots mm-hmm. and that's a great productivity loss to them and so when they sign up for our service now we have the charger that goes to the vehicles and the drivers can just you know stay put and focus on their work rather than focusing on getting their vehicle charged okay now does the you know person with your company free wire do they plug the car in or does the, the customer have to come and do it themselves or no. how does that how does that happen so it's full service full oh, okay. service there uh, the moment they arrive on at their uh, workplace they use the app they just check in it's a geofenced area on the app that you can see and you just locate your parking spot and you send a no- notification to the operator that oh. I've arrived I need to be charged cool. for the end of the day and then they could just go about their work day as if they were driving a regular car. That's really convenient. <laughs> That's really, 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 uh, really awesome. I mean, California is just full of, uh, of EVs everywhere. I was in I was in San Jose recently, and I, I just saw them everywhere. Do you think that it's you know just concentrated on on the West Coast? A lot of EVs there, or you know, what is it like? Maybe across America, across across the world. You know, what do you, what do you think about that? What's the state of electric vehicles? So I think the heaviest concentration is still in California, but mm-hmm. it's definitely you know increasing uh, worldwide, and especially in the U.S. You see many other states set up um, step up with incentives, and mm-hmm. there's also obviously the federal incentives, but you see a lot of them. Um, uh, in, at the state level, at the city level, as well as support for charging infrastructure, mm-hmm. because it's typically you know a chicken and an egg. People aren't comfortable buying an electric vehicle unless they know that they can, can get a charge, and especially the um, the bigger challenges now that we've, we've sort of we're past this the early adopters phase and looking at the mass market. Uh, not everyone is a single home owner where they they have control over uh, whether they have charging or not right so they want to get more comfortable and they want to see more charging infrastructure around them so that that would just push them over to buy an electric vehicle so we're just seeing a lot of uh, support for just infrastructure as well which we're really happy about mm-hmm. is there a, is there a bright future for evs maybe oh definitely for, for everybody yeah okay yes what would be We've- what would be oh, sorry no go ahead that's that's great what what would be the, the the future that you see like everybody drives an ev or is it kind of a blend of of the two or what, what's what do you think i think in a very long-term scenario you're gonna see i predict you know more than 90 percent of the vehicles are going to be electric mm-hmm. and there's always going to be a very very small percentage that are still um you know, maybe niche cases. Uh, there's sort of this this attachment, as I understand. I'm so I'm not a fanatic about uh, <laughs> of, about the internal combustion vehicles, but some of the um, the fans of the older classics, the the stick shift, they, they there's this attachment that just you know isn't there with electric vehicles, and you're you're almost you're faking it to some degree if you try to try to simulate that um, experience. So without the authenticity, uh, just I, ju- I just don't think that's gonna fly. So I think mm-hmm. those drivers will always have uh, an internal internal combustion vehicle, but we'll always hold especially on to with, yeah. yeah, exactly. And with the uh, rise of um, autonomous vehicles, I think you know that's gonna be that's gonna be pushing along, uh, pushing the uh, entire sector into the electric, mm-hmm. um, you know, going versus internal combustion, so. It seems like it's easier for an autonomous vehicle to utilize an electric vehicle than it would an internal combustion. It seems like the components would be much harder to, right. to work in an internal combustion vehicle, you know, because of all the extra pieces in there. I, I don't know, that's just, right. that's just my thought. <laughs> Uh, yes, I'm not. I'm not an not an expert, but uh, from the experts, I have heard that because there are far less moving pieces, it is much more it readily 
um, able to be controlled in an electric vehicle versus internal combustion. So yeah, the future is very bright. It's just it's so many trends that are converging, allowing this uh, electrification revolution to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, that's awesome. Great. I really appreciate t you uh, taking the time to talk to me today about FreeWire and the Mobi. Um, now, is there just Mobi chargers. the Mobi recharge? That's such a cool name. Um, that's that's great. So thank you so much, Serena.